Ladies and gentlemen, um, I am Nathan. Taylor. I'm a signal officer. Uh, I work in cybersecurity. I have a degree in network security, information systems. I worked as a data analyst for a real-time network monitoring company that provided security to different entities uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, I am the co-founder. I am a co-founder of the Election Truth Alliance, a nonprofit, uh, currently volunteer organization. And what we're doing is we're dedicated to investigating and potentially litigating election security concerns for the 2024 presidential election. We're in the works for the litigation part right now. We've been pushing out um, our theories and analysis on the investigating part. And so what I'm going to be doing in this presentation, I'm going to kind of run through a, a presentation we've given a few times now. I'm going to be covering the analysis um, of significant abnormalities in the 2024 president's election, which is showing indicators of a vote swapping hack at the precinct level. And I'm going to walk you through that. So as I said, the Election Truth Alliance and uh, Dire Talks, which is my social media um, non-political, non non-partisan um, media channel. And so what we're going to talk about, we'll walk you through you know, the abnormalities and we're going to talk about you know, the concept of a Russian tale as well. So as I mentioned, we're going to analyze some abnormalities, specifically drop-off abnormalities, and I'll kind of tell you what those are. Uh, we'll go through the theories of what could or could not cause these abnormalities. And then I'll show you some concerning parallels with other known manipulated elections. As we see drop-off vote abnormalities in the seven swing states versus non-swing states. And so, for example, candidate Harris of the Democrats has a negative 1.48% drop-off vote rate in the swing states. Uh, what this means is a drop-off vote rate is how many votes the president got compared to the next down-ballot race, like senator. And so it, it kind of gives us an estimate of how popular a candidate is, whether that be the president or a local position because the Democratic base will vote for either of those candidates based on how much they like them. And so we see that Harris, on average, was unliked in the swing states. She had a negative drop-off vote rate. More people voted for the Democratic base, for the senators, than for Harris. And when we look at outside the swing states, so keep in mind this is seven swing states, and all other 43 states, we see that she has a positive 1.37%, and Trump has a positive 2%. So what's really abnormal here is Harris is underperforming on average in the swing states, and Trump is significantly overperforming by 5.58%, which brings up the concern of where did he get those votes? Did he get those votes um, on top of the, the Republican Party? He had to have gotten extra votes. So either more Republicans showed up to vote this time around, or people changed their votes from whatever party they are to Trump. And so... Uh, one way to analyze this is, well, we see it, as I said, across multiple states. But what's strange is in 2020, as a comparison, we see this more chaotic shift of um, drop-off votes. You know, the president is sometimes matching, exceeding, or below the, um, the senator, for example, in North Carolina. And so 2020, we see a more chaotic shift. In 2024, we see this very aggressive um, pattern where the candidate for the Democratic Party is always underperforming all across the board in North Carolina. Um, this is strange. We look at some other places. Ohio, 2016, we see chaos. We see both parties are somewhat popular over their next down ballot, ca next down ballot candidate. Now, 2020, we still see some chaotic shifts up and down. Both parties grow, match, and fall below the next down ballot candidate. Yet in 2024, we see the same issue in Ohio. Significant underperformance, significant overperformance. Uh, the Democrats underperformed, the Republicans overperformed. And so really the only two theories we have is a candidate that got significant underperformance in the swing states was an unpopular candidate, right? So that would be Harris. She was unpopular compared to the, the next down ballot candidate. She was unpopular and her base didn't vote for her on majority. Or this is a sign of manipulation and votes were potentially taken from one candidate and given to the other, that would create this negative drop-off vote rate for one and an overabundance of drop-off votes for the other. And so let's kind of, let's look into this. And so we're looking at popularity. Well, if candidate Harris was unpopular in the swing states that we see the negative drop-off vote percentage for, we should see that she didn't get the same um, turnout compared to 2020 for her party. And so what this, this shows is if we look here at Georgia, we look at Nevada, we look at North Carolina, and we look at Wisconsin, we see that Harris is actually matching or slightly exceeding Biden's 2020 performance. Interesting. 
And then in the other states, Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, we see she's only you know, 0. 0.1 under. So does this, does this show that Harris was an unpopular candidate in the swing states, the swing states that we're seeing this negative drop-off vote percentage for? It doesn't. And to further cement that, uh, we did a, a breakdown of how many votes the Democratic president got in 2020 versus how many votes they got in 2024. And so at the bottom left here, uh, candidate Harris got 99.5% of the votes that were cast in 2020. 99.5% of the Democratic base from election to election. And so what does this mean? Well, this would would kind of somewhat discredit the theory that she was unpopular in the swing states. And instead, this would make us turn and look at the theory of would this be manipulation? And so the way this manipulation would occur then is um, the Democratic base would have had to have grown significantly. And then every vote that was above that threshold of 2020 votes Um, could have been potentially taken and given to um, the Republican candidate. And that would make sense. That would explain that difference in drop-off votes we're seeing across the swing states compared to outside the swing states. And so we would see inconsistencies in vote types that weren't manipulated. And so there's three types of voting you can do in the the 2024 presidential election. You can do mail-in, you can do early voting, you do election day. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at Clark County specifically where we have the voting record data, the CVR data that shows how people voted um, across those three categories. And so when we look here at mail-in ballots, one of the three types, we see that Harris, when compared to Senator Rosen, is uh, actually almost pretty much on par, almost on par with the same amount of votes. So she doesn't have a significant negative drop-off vote um, rate here in mail-in ballots in Clark County. And yet, you know, Trump does have an overperformance as well. So this would kind of point at, hey, does this look like it was manipulated? Well, if we're assuming negative drop-off votes on average is manipulation, then no, this looks like um, unmanipulated data at a glance. And so if we run with this, we see when we show it as a distribution, um, what this does is this shows the amount of ballots counted into each machine, each tabulator. I think there's over 900 tabulators represented here. And so the way you read this is this is the percentage of votes Um, 50% is the middle part here. You're going to see the graph mirror across 50% because there's either left or right voting and there is other, but it's, it's not a significant amount. And so what we're looking at is this is the amount of ballots fed into each tabulator. And as I said, there's over 900 tabulators. So zero is zero ballots fed in. And then as we feed ballots in, we see, um, no significant patterns for either party. It's pretty chaotic. Obviously, whichever party has the most now, votes is going to win. Whoever has, you know, the higher threshold is going to win. And so in this case, I believe Harris outperforms over Trump. And so I'm not seeing any manipulation here, right? This doesn't suggest this is, this looks above board. This looks normal. So this is going to be our baseline for what we should expect when showing data distributed like this. And so when we look at 2020 and 2024 for early voting in Clark County, we see patterns that don't match the mail-in voting distribution. Specifically, we see this in 2020. We see more of that chaotic normal distribution in the beginning. But then after about 600, we start to see this separation. Both groups kind of stick out here. Um, And so if we're under the assumption this is manipulation and that Harris was a popular candidate, this would be representative of a vote flipping algorithm. After 600 votes were fed into each tabulator, we start to see separation. Percentage of the votes are starting to be shifted up for Trump and down for Harris. Interesting. This is in 2020. So if we just take this, this more normal sub-600 group and we compare it to 2020 or 2024, uh, what, the, the distribution is just absolutely abnormal. Um, after, I mean, we see this chaotic pattern in the beginning here, sure. But then after about 400 votes, we start to see that heavy separation we saw in 2020 after the 600 mark, at the 400 mark. And then after that, after around 600, it just becomes a, a solid separation. Very large um, separation between both both parties. And as I said, this would suggest there was a vote flipping algorithm taking uh, votes. And as you fed more count more ballots in, it shifts the outcomes. And so there's an argument of, well, you know, what would cause that this normally, you know, what kind of um, patterns would cause this? People are like, hey, you know, maybe certain votes are being counted in certain places. Well, realistically, this is the entire county. And so we should see an average distribution because it's the entire county and any hot spots of red or blue would even equal themselves out. 
And so what we did is we took early voting data for Clark County based on that CVR data, and we, we mapped it out this way to show it in a different way. And so we're going to pull the distribution of one party out each time and kind of compare it to what we should expect to see. So obviously the, the blue is Harris and the red is Trump. This is for early voting Clark County 2024. And so we've pulled out the distribution of Trump's performance for early voting. And so there's a concept called a bell curve. This shows normal distribution. Um, generally, this shows there is no manipulation. We see manipulation. It shouldn't really match the bell curve if we assume that voting data can be applied a normal distribution. And so what we did is we compared Clark County 2024 early voting, um, Trump's portion to a normal distribution. We see it's abnormal. It doesn't match a normal distribution whatsoever. Um, we see this separation here that suggests that votes were potentially added in above the 50% mark from a different data population and would get us this spike here. And so when we compare it to Harris, we see the opposite. We see the distribution. It obviously doesn't match, but we see that below the 50% mark, it suggests votes were taken away and given to a different data set. So, so what kind of manipulation would cause this and what it would look like external of this election? In 2020, Russia had a constitutional referendum where President Putin wanted to extend his terms for president. And so Russian data scientists, um, they've been finding patterns of, of election fraud in their elections for a while now. And so they coined this term of a Russian tail. And what a Russian tail is, is it, Russian tail is specifically on the left here of this graph. Um, this, this portion of the graph here that doesn't match the normal distribution, this is a Russian tail, and it's an indication of imperfect fraud. And so Russian tail specifically would suggest the uh, normal distribution of the data that had been taken. And so when we compare that, we obviously see the, this, this um, voting outcome for the 2020 Russian referendum doesn't match normal distribution at all, has this Russian tail. So the argument then is, you know, how do you apply um, this to 2024? And if we put a normal distribution here, we may suggest this is the unmanipulated data. And so we see very distinct parallels between the, the Russian referendum and Trump's performance in Clark County in 2024 for early voting. Um, and, and the thing is, we get, C, we get CVR data for other counties, and we do this analysis, are we going to see the same parallels? And so there was another instance of manipulation in 2024 with the Georgian Dream Party fraud. They've been accused of being supported by Russia, by the Georgian government at the time. And so what we see, we see, you know, the same issue of this doesn't match a normal distribution. It's not as abundantly clear manipulation, but we do see kind of this weird um, portion of the graph that, that doesn't match that bell curve we would expect to see. And obviously we compare that and there are some slight similarities, not as distinct as the 2020 Russian referendum, but we do see some interesting shifts in how the data is portrayed. And so as we, uh, we said to kind of summarize here is we were tipped off. There was abnormalities because of the drop-off of vote rates, the negative drop-off vote rates for Harris in the swing states, and yet the significantly positive drop-off vote rates for Trump as well. Outside the swing states, it's more average, more expected, more normal. And so as I said, we saw this negative percentage for Harris, positive, significantly positive percentage for Trump, and yet it doesn't really match the average outside the swing states. So the seven swing states seem to have carried a significant underperformance for Harris. And yet when we look, we saw that Harris was 99.5% as popular as Biden in 2020. So the Democratic base showed up in the seven swing states that we see this underperformance in, and they voted, and they voted for Harris. Across all these states, she actually overperformed, and in the other, she slightly underperformed, 99.5% of the base. But Smart Elections published a analysis between the performance of Harris and the next down ballot candidate across these five swing states. So they said, hey, this is how much Harris underperformed. This is how much those... Um, those senators and those, those other next down ballot candidates got in votes. And so what we did is we said, okay, well, if this was a vote flipping algorithm, like our theory suggests, like the data suggests, well, as we see here in North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, Harris is underperforming um, based on Trump's performance. So Harris got less votes. And so Trump is winning in these five swing states. So what we did is we took that estimated value of underperformance and we said, well, so if these were stolen votes, and Harris got 0% um, drop-off votes, got as much votes as the senators, which realistically she would have gotten, you know, at least 1% to 2%, but we gave her 0% of the votes. And we said, okay, well, let's take these potentially flipped votes, this, these numbers of votes, and let's take them away from Trump's performance in these five swing states that this calculation can be done in, 
and let's give them back to Harris. And let's see the impact of potentially flipping that amount of votes. And we did. And we see in North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, um, if there was manipulation on this, the, the scale our data suggests and our analysis suggests, she would have won these five swing states. And so just to, to kind of sum everything up, in order to pull off a, a hack on the scale our analysis is suggesting occurred, it would have been, um, you would have had to have been a very wealthy and powerful individual or with support of a foreign actor. Like we're talking ridiculous amounts of money, hundreds of millions of dollars potentially to do this on the scale we're seeing it in. And so I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, um, you know, please reach out on our website or you know, in the comments. If you are interested in joining the Election Truth Alliance and helping us fight back against this potential manipulation through legal action, through volunteering your, your skills, or through donations, um, all of those links will be in the, the comment or the description as well. So thank you very much.